Okay, we're going to look at the expected value and some alternative formulas for the expected value, both for the continuous and discrete case. We're also going to assume that x is non-negative. And let's first show that the expected value is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus f of x dx, sometimes called the survivor function. Okay, let's, let's start. So here, expected value of x by definition is the integral of x f of x dx. And then if we rewrite this x as the integral from 0 to x dt, so there's an inherent 1 there, and then when you take the antiderivative of 1, you just get t, and then when you um, plug in the values x and 0, it leaves just x. So from here to here, nothing has changed. So then we're going to take away these brackets in the next step. And just we have a double integral and we're integrating from t for the t world first and then the x world. And so if we look at the x and t, we're, we're not in this region here. We're in this region. And if we're integrating t first from 0 to x, and then x goes from 0 to infinity. So this is, the, this is the region that we're integrating over, down here. So if we want to switch these orders of operations, integrate x first and then t, x would go from t to infinity, and t would go from 0 to infinity. I mean, x would go, yeah, x would go from t to infinity, and t would go from... 0 to infinity. So that's what we do. We switch these the the order of op, uh, integration and we get this. But if we look at this piece right here, that's just the probability that x is greater than t. Well, the probability that x is greater than t, and remember that we're in the continuous world so that equal sign doesn't really play a part, is 1 minus f of t, which is this. And now t is just a dummy variable, so we, uh, we, can, we can put an x there, and then that's what we were here to show. Now let's look at the discrete case. And we want to show that the expected value is equal to the sum of the probability that x is greater than i. And before we show that, let's look at this matrix here. Okay? So, we're going to look just at the middle piece here. It's going to be sort of an upper diagonal triangle, zeros below. And here we're going to put the probability that x is 1. And then here we're going to put probability that x is 2, probability that x is 2, and then the rest zeros. And here we're going to put probability that x is 3, x3, three, 3, and then the rest zeros. And then 4, 4, 4, 4, and x zeros. And then we want to add all these pieces up. Okay? And there's different ways we could do it. We could add them this way, which there's, only, there's one of these, so 1 times the probability that x is 1. And if we crunch those this way, there's 2 times the probability of x is equal to 2, and here there are 3, probability of x is equal to 3, and then there will be 4, probability of x is equal to 4, and then we could add these. That's going to be the same if, if we add this way. So if we, if we add this way, probability of x is 1, 2, 3, 4, that's just the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. And here, this row, two, you know, x is equal to 2, 3, 4. That's just the probability that x is greater or equal to 2. And then we add this row. And then we add those. So that's going to be the same if we add these or add those. Well, now if we look at the expected value of x, that's the sum of the x times the probability of that respective x, which is what this top row is 1 times probability of 1, 2 times probability of 2, 3 times probability of 3, and so by, that's it. But 
adding this is going to be the same as adding this. So adding this is this piece. So it's the sum of the probability that x is greater than or equal to i. So we add probability that x is greater than or equal to 1, and then probability that x is greater than or equal to 2, plus probability that x is greater than 3. So those two uh, formulas, or this specifically, are equal. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe.